All right, we're going to get started. So welcome, bienvenidos, and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for our CTA Diversity Task Force Hispanic History Month panel and recruitment event. I am your moderator for today. I am Cristina Aguirre. I'm the senior coordinator for our amazing HR marketing, outreach, and engagement team. I've only been here for a month. So they just threw me in the wild to, to moderate this, which I'm really excited and very nervous. <laughs> so CT is so proud to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. And from September 15th to October 15th, we spotlighted some of our amazing Hispanic employees and Chicago cultural landmarks via our, our last CTA campaign, which you saw all over social media and also via email. And this panel today is a great way to end with a bang and celebrate diversity that CTA values so much. And today's panelists, as you see them here, uh, we're featuring talented individuals who represent the Hispanic community and have had a successful careers at the Chicago Transit Authority. And we also welcome the recruitment team, Susana, who will share a presentation after our panel uh, with all the information on how interested candidates can apply and join the CTA team. So we're gonna start with introductions. So here is our awesome panelist presenters. And we're gonna start with introductions to each person. So each person's going to introduce yourself and tell us what your first job at CTA was and what is your job now. And we'll start with Victor. Hi, I'm Victor Ramirez. I'm currently the manager of signage and wayfinding. Um, my first permanent job at the CTA was back all the way in 96 when I worked in revenue equipment as a data analyst, number crunching, making sure the turnstiles were working, stuff like that. Uh, fast forward to this last 13 years, I was a coordinator over in signage. And just last year, I became the manager of signage and wayfinder. Beautiful. And now let's go to Steve Fuentes. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Steve Fuentes, and I have worked for the CTA for 28 years come November 7th. Um, I started my career as a part-time bus operator in 1994 and currently hold the position of regional general manager in our bus operations department. And I'm glad to be a part of this. Thank you. And we're going to Elsa. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Elsa Gutierrez and I started as a senior um, service planner in our planning department in 2002, and I'm currently the Vice President of Scheduling and Service Planning. So um, as you heard from the other panelists, you know, probably held a lot of roles in between, but just the richness of experience here and um, other areas that you get to know uh, as being part of CTA and how uh, that experience leads to um, your current position in helping you make decisions and, and recommendations on how to move uh, the service forward. So welcome and uh, excited to um, um, to hear your questions later. Thank you. And we're going to Peter. Hi, I'm uh, Peter McNamara. I'm a very proud Peruvian Irish American. Um, I started here at CTA in 2018 uh, as a senior attorney in our labor and employment group. Uh, we primarily handle federal court litigation. And uh, I was promoted a couple of years ago to chief attorney. So my job is pretty similar other than I now supervise uh, some supported attorneys that are needed. Wonderful. And Leticia. That's me. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Leticia Nieto. I'm the director of talent acquisition. Uh, and my first job at CTA here was almost exactly five years ago. I started in October um, and I was a temp. I was hired as a temporary recruiter and my plans were to be here for a couple of months and then move on and get more experiences because I was in the middle of a career change. Um, and so I wanted to just to learn about as much as I could in as many companies as I could. Fast forward to a few different positions in between. Um, now I oversee talent acquisition and the recruitment of all the jobs at CTA, um, but also the area that Chris, our newest hire, the, the youngest in terms of tenure here, um, her marketing outreach and engagement department, and also our employee records unit. Um, so my work has changed, um, but that is a direct result of CTA's, um, the focus we put on the talent that we have. Um, we want to bring new talent in, and you'll hear more about that at the end of the presentation, but we also value the talent that we have here, and you'll see that as you hear the story. So excited to be on this panel. Wonderful. And last but not least, Susanna, who will be our 
uh, presenting more about CTA careers. All right, uh, my name is Susana Orozco. I've been with uh, CTA uh, a little over five years now. Um, like Leticia, I also started as a temporary uh, recruiter and uh, the talent acquisition department. And then fast forward, um, today my title is senior talent <laughs> specialist. Beautiful, thank you guys so much for introducing um, each one. And for some house rules, if you have any question for our panelists, feel free to use that Q&A box at the bottom or left, or you can even use chat. And then at the end of the entire um, presentation and Q&A, we'll get to those questions. And we're also, we're also recording this and we're gonna put it up on our YouTube page too as well. All right, let's go with the first question. So when did you start your career at CTA and how has your career progressed at CTA? And this question will go to Steve and Victor. Go ahead, okay. Steve. <laughs> All right, thank you, Victor. Um, so after serving in the uh, United States Navy for a couple of years after high school, um, I started my career at CTA in November of 1994 as a part-time bus operator. Um, three years part-time, then became a full-time bus operator in November 90, uh, 1997, and went on to work as a bus operator until 2009, when I became a bus service supervisor, which was still a union position. Then in 2012, I made the career choice to move into management with uh, bus operations as a manager uh, in, in bus ops, as I said, in 2012. And since then, I've held various managerial positions in bus operations, including transportation manager one, uh, transportation manager two, senior manager, general manager, and director of bus operations, uh, which is the position I currently hold, but under a different title due to some restructuring a couple of years back. So um, altogether, November 7th, it'll be 28 years, um, all in bus operations and holding various positions. Amazing. Okay. All right, it's all you. <laughs> all right. Okay, I started all the way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I started all the way back in May of 1990 as a technical service engineer student trainee, which they now call an intern. Uh, they had me basically testing, testing prototype buses testing and designing wheelchair lifts for these old TMC buses. Um, anything that didn't have air conditioning, I had to figure out how to put air conditioning in it. Then um, I, I was still in school. Back in May 91, I came back and I started working in capital grants and as a planning intern. And I ran around shooting all the, or taking photos, I should say, taking photos of all the stations that dated prior to 1900 for this catalog that the Chicago History Museum wanted to archive because they were going to start redoing the entire Green Line. Then I went to work at Chicago Public Schools until a bright day in 96 when I got called by someone in revenue equipment to come in to help them set up the AFC equipment um, and do a bunch of data analytics and stuff. And after a couple of years there, I became coordinator of graphics and from there it became my dream job and eventually i became manager of signage and wayfinding amazing and victor does a great job in all the graphics we always do last minute for him <laughs> thank, thank you. you all right and then we're going to get to the next question what has kept you at cta throughout all the years and we're going to start this question with elsa that's mine um, so what's kept me at CTA all these years, uh, I think there's a multiple of things. There's just a lot of, of projects that I've worked on uh, variously when we introduced the pink line in 2006, 2008, um, and that it's always evolving and I'm always learning something new. Even though I've been at CTA for, for 20 years, I still feel like every day I come in and I'm learning something new, something different. And that evolving is good. You know, before we didn't have as many ADA accessible stations and we are always working to strive to get to 100%. And then you play a role in terms of how to make that happen. So every item, every aspect of your work 
that contributes to getting closer to the bigger um, mission and goal of CTA is very uh, rewarding for me. And I think that that's what keeps me going because I know that I'm playing a part in making uh, service uh, better for our customers and, and moving forward. Um, when I first started, we, we did not have as much rich data as we have now. I'm a little bit of a data geek. Um, I, I, I love numbers. And um, basically that is when we first put in, I think around 2000, we first put in the uh, automatic passenger counters on our buses. And so before we used to have checkers, we used to go three times a year to figure out how many people were riding our buses and trains. And now fast forward, we have so much data, we don't even know what to do with it. And that's why we are excited to be able to interest um, anybody who's watching um, this um, webinar, because um, if you love data, there is a position here <laughs> to help you um, analyze and, and look at data and then make decisions and, and make recommendations. Um, we were on the forefront of many other, uh, uh, we were in the forefront of having this data rich information for us to make decisions. Some of our peers in, in the transit industry have not quite caught up there or have caught up and maybe only have uh, more recent experience on, on some of their data sources. So that's kind of one of the things that keeps me going is some of the long-term you know, projects that can always expand, but then also the, the initiatives that you're contributing to make um, transit a better place for our customers, uh, as well as ourselves who, who use the service. Beautiful. And how about you, Leticia? I think you're going to nail this question. <laughs> uh, this is also my question. Thank you. Um, and similarly to, to Elsa, it's public service. I, you know, I, my career before HR, before CTA, I worked in public service for 18 years and I knew that I wanted to find a place to work where I was proud to work there. Um, I didn't want it to just be a job, which is fine, um, but I wanted to have a sense of pride in the work that we do and a pride in the organization and, and to serve serve. Um, and that is what CTA does. Like we serve the city of Chicago. We serve communities across the city. Um, and we saw that during the pandemic. It's how people got to work. It's how people got their kids to school. Um, and so that's really important to me is to feel like we're doing something. Um, and we, like the people on this panel, we're obviously not out there driving the buses or, or operating the trains, um, which are some of our most important jobs. Um, but everybody on this call contributes in some way to make sure that every day we're providing service to the city. Um, and people can enjoy the richness of all the um, the places that our last CTA campaign pointed out, like this is how you can get to downtown, this is how you can get to the lakefront, to the museums, to, you know, the different Pilsen, to Little Village. Um, people use our system to live their lives um, and to be able to like drive by somewhere and see the CTA sign and be proud to be part of that um, is really important to me. So even though I plan to stay just a couple of months, you know, once you start to work here and you see the impact that CTA has in the community, um, you realize that it's a special place and, and you find a way to stay. Beautiful. How about you, Victor? It, you know, what really keeps me here is the close knit culture of friends that you meet at this job. You're, it's just so many years just working with so many great people. You're drawn to their greatness and they bring that spirit out in you. I Right now, I currently rely on my group of designers, Tony, <laughs> Mike, and Nathan. They're my backbone. You know, I'll do anything for these guys. They're the best employees anybody could have. Um, it keeps me coming to work. I, I love this place. I've been here over 26 years, almost 30, but yeah, I love it. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Question. In your opinion, what are the top reasons someone should consider a career at CTA? And for this one, we're going to Peter. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd say it's a venerable institution in uh, Chicagoland. I mean, it's a very well-respected place. Um, you see it whenever they do like their, uh, you know, the B-roll of Chicago, like during a Bears game, they show the CTA trains, the buses under the L tracks. It's in the movies. Um, it's just part of the fabric of Chicago, in my opinion. Uh, another reason is that it's, uh, you're, as I think Leticia pointed out, it's kind of doing something bigger than yourself. You're serving the traveling public to ensure that they have access to reasonably priced travel. Um, you know, this is, I think goes without saying, but it has great pay and benefits. Uh, we, we have pensions, which is a wonderful thing. We have great benefits in terms of health insurance. And the, the last reason, all this doesn't really apply to me, um, but it, 
you know, may, may apply to somebody else who's looking uh, to come here, is there's so many different career paths you can follow. I mean, we have so many different jobs. We have engineers and lawyers and bus drivers and rail operators and mechanics. We have uh, painters and carpenters and um, just so many different fields. We have HR people, uh, benefits people, you know, we have so many different fields uh, that are at CTA. And in my experience with my bosses, at least, they really let me branch out and kind of take on whatever I have an interest in. Um, and I think that, uh, especially as you see higher up the food chain here at CTA, people have taken on a number of different roles, it gives you different perspective and appreciation for everything that CTA does. Yeah, you don't realize how many opportunities are out there in CTA. We're not just bus operators or rail. It's so much more. Um, and we're going to go now to Leticia. Yeah, so Pete gave maybe, Peter gave maybe the best possible answer. Yes, all of those things are true. Um, and then within that, kind of piggybacking off of what he said in terms of like opportunities to branch out into other fields, I think we are a place where you can build a career um, and that career has an opportunity to evolve. Um, it's not a job that you're finding here. It absolutely is a career. And you see that with the folks that started, um, who've explained what their career paths have been. You can start at an entry level position and work your way up all the way to general manager, vice president, um, just by putting in your time with us, learning through all the different professional development and training opportunities that CTA provides. We have an entire unit um, develop that is dedicated to training workforce development. Um, and so if you're looking for those opportunities, you're going to find them. And you might even find yourself starting in HR and end up in planning or end up in the different departments. And we see it in HR, we see that, you know, we see a lot of applicants from different departments who have had an opportunity to work with a different unit and are like, you know, I want to do that. Um, and you can. Um, and it's how, you know, plug for HR, if you're ever looking for a job in HR, we're one of the departments that gets to really intersect with almost every other unit at the organization. And so we get to see the amazing work um, that if you're not knowledgeable about what we do, you don't realize that we have communications and law and graphic design and all these different areas. So um, if you are looking to start a career, not just start a job, I think that this is a wonderful place for that. Very well said. All right. And we're going to the next question. What is one of your greatest career accomplish accomplishments? <laughs> Victor. Basically being able to streamline our signage to make it easier for passengers to understand. Modernizing our maps, timetables, uh, simplifying methods of producing uh, in-house signage with the latest and large format printing is basically our that, you know, that's, that, that's my career accomplishment here, is to try to make everything uh, visually appealing. Flow, flow better, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else wants to answer this. We'll go to the next question. All right, we're going to the next question. And this one's for everyone. Um, how has your culture or heritage played a role in your career journey? I don't know who wants to go first. <laughs> I'll kick I, us off. I, I can go ahead. Okay. Um, for me, it's a it's a great. I'm a first generation college student, um, first generation American, um, and my parents worked really hard to make sure that we were able to get the education that they felt that would help us progress in our careers. And for me, it's a sense of pride to be able to say that I'm, you know, probably Mexican American from Pilsen, a predominantly Mexican neighborhood. Um, and that I can say that I oversee the hiring for the CTA, for the Chicago Transit Authority. So it, it's a personal accomplishment for me as a professional, um, but also I, I feel like I have something to prove, you know, to be a Latina in, in business and to be able to continue to excel in my career and to be an example for the people in my family that come after me or in my community to say that this is possible for you as well. Um, we're not an up and coming community. We are here, we have been here and we're continuing to thrive. So for me, it is both a personal accomplishment but also an accomplishment for my community that there are so many people on this call who have been successful professionals and can continue to be role models for other uh, Hispanic and Latino professionals. Beautiful. Um, I'll go. Um, so kind of like uh, Leticia said, I'm a Mexican American as well. And my culture and heritage, I believe, you know, helped prepare me for life and career just by instilling in me a respect for others and a genuine appreciation for living 
and thriving, you know, in a multi ethnic, multiracial environment, whether it was just the neighborhood I grew up in, in Chicago, which was kind of the Humble Park area, the schools that I went to or serving the Navy, I've always had the privilege and, you know, opportunity to, to work well in environments where people from all backgrounds, you know, were a part of the team. Um, you know, growing up in a, in a Mexican-American home, uh, one thing is when you walked through our doors, you were considered family. You know, when you sat at the table, you ate whatever my mom put in front of you, you know, and you became one of us. And that's just part of, you know, our heritage as uh, Latinos and Latinas is, you know, you treat people with respect and dignity. And that has carried through in my career. Um, no matter the position I hold, um, I've started entry level and have, you know, progressed through the years. Uh, but those folks who come in the door entry level, whether they're, you know, from the president, Mr. Carter, all the way down to, you know, the lowest paid person at CTA, you're never going to know who they are by how I treat them. I treat everybody equally, and, you know, my upbringing is a part of that. That's wonderful. Anyone else? I can go, I can go just to keep the theme of, you know, Latinos in Chicago. I'm also Mexican American from the Southeast side, which is South Chicago. I think an area that probably has a large Latino population, but, you know, Pilsen and Little Village kind of overshadow it as well, as well as Humble Park. Um, you know, I grew up using the system that was our mode of transportation. And uh, although my career had led me to be a planner and work, uh, which is uh, of urban planning, um, I always had a fascination for transit and using it because I was a, a user of it and we traveled everywhere for it. But I think what helped with my um, heritage or, or something that I learned from my parents um, also as a, as a first generation, uh, second generation, because my parents came first, but I was born here, so I'm second generation, was there just a collaborative approach to solving problems. You know, I was the oldest of uh, five and you got to work together and everybody plays a role. And that has really helped me throughout the, with, with my career because if you aren't synced in, if you aren't working together, if you're not communicating, if you're not um, finding ways to solve the problem and including everybody's input, it's gonna be hard to solve the problem um, in, the, in the time frame that you have because you're not really, taking advantage of, of the um, strengths that each person has as a team. And the way I translate that in, in my work is basically ensuring that everybody can contribute and has uh, the opportunity to contribute. And it doesn't just include my team who I work with, but all the different departments. And if you wanna go a little larger, even the agencies, our buses operate on the streets. The streets are managed by the Chicago Department of Transportation. So we can't continue to be in a bubble and think, oh, it's just, you know, I have to worry about CTA. Yes, I, I have to um, understand how CTA works in the context of my department, in planning, in the agency, but then also within the broader scope of the city and the role we play and how they are also players and contributors to ensure that we're successful in providing the service that we uh, that we uh, provide every day for, for our customers. So I kind of feel like that collaborative approach of coming from a big family that kind of helps me uh, both use some of those um, talents here at work and then also um, in the bigger picture of the city. Oh, thank you, Elsa. Right, anyone else? Sure. Uh, go ahead. Me. Oh. Yeah. So using my Puerto Rican background, <laughs> I try to make everybody basically my friend. So we get we get a lot more done that way. Um, I've used my mom and her friends whenever I have to do a lot of Spanish translations for a lot of our signs. So I bounce it off of them. It's either I got somebody from Guatemala, from Mexico, from Santo Domingo, or even Puerto Rico, uh, we try to harmonize our signage. So it's just less militaristic and just more down to earth, more Chicago. And, you know, growing up with my mom and my brother, that's all we had. Um, really, again, this is enveloping CTA. CTA treats me like a family. I treat them like a family. 
and I really love this place. And yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> and uh, I guess I'll finish up. So um, my mom is from Peru. My dad is from Ireland. They both were born there. They came to the United States uh, in the 19, late 1950s and early 1960s. They both were immigrants. Um, they're part of the silent generation, which is the generation that preceded baby boomers. And so they kind of uh, were raised with, uh, you know, a lot of resilience, self-sufficiency, hard work ethic. Uh, you know, coming out of the Great Depression, uh, which was a worldwide phenomenon. And so uh, they really came here without, they came here without their families, um, just the, both were on their own, and they really carved out a life for themselves. And they, uh, you know, uh, taught me, my dad always said that, you know, you have to love what you do, you can't go to work. Uh, if you don't love what you do, it's, it's going to be really painful every single day to go to work. And so uh, when you choose a job, it has to be something you're very passionate about, something you do without any pay. Um, and that's, uh, that's how my background has played a role in my career journey. Wow, thank you so much, Peter. All right, that was amazing to hear everyone's background. And here we have, what has been one of your biggest decisions you have made that has impacted your career? And we're going back to Steve. Okay, uh, one of the biggest decisions I made was in 2012, and that was to <clears throat> move out of the union, which I had been a part of for like 15 years, and into management. Um, I was already having a very good career, and many of my contemporaries who chose to stay in the union continue to have great careers to this day. Um, but for me, I made that decision to move out of the union into an exempt position um, because I wanted to have the greatest positive impact I could on as many as I could for as long as I could. And I knew <clears throat> I, needed, I needed a greater sphere of influence in order to do that. Um, and by the grace of God, since making that move in 2012, several doors have opened up for me, uh, which have allowed me to do just that, uh, both in my current role as a district general manager and previous roles I've held, which was running the day-to-day -day of uh, multiple bus garages. So yeah, that was a big decision. Um, several, you know, people told me to really consider it, think twice about it. So I, I and I did, and I spoke with family and you know prayed about it and made the decision. And um, since then, you know, things have one worked out, you know, better than I could have hoped for. Amazing to hear. Thank you. And our next question, who has been one of your role models and why? And what did you learn from that person? And how do you put those lessons into practice today? And this is for Victor. All right. I actually have two role models. Uh, my first is Charles Arndt, who was the former manager of signage. And the second is Graham Garfield, who's currently at RPM. He used to be our general manager. My God, I learned so much from both of them. I learned that patience is a virtue when you're trying to get something printed. Uh, you got to review your maps, review all your signs, timetables for typographical errors, any layouts, uh, issues like that. Try to get everything fixed. Every day I'm in review mode, looking at everything, making sure that everything is spelt right. Um, I'll be watching TV late night and I'm like noticing errors and watching, you know, Chicago Met or something and I'm losing my mind. So I can't shut it off, but it's a great feeling that I'm under control and I can still function and still look at everything that is being produced from our department should be 100 percent lovely we got to watch out for you in case you find some errors in anything <laughs> thank you so much and the next question is what has been one of your most valuable learning experiences and this one is for peter yeah i would say that um one of my most valuable learning experiences i feel like most of your um best learning experiences probably come from failure or not not getting something you're going for. So um, when I was here for about a year or so, maybe like 14 months, nine months, something like that, it was, I was here for a boy ship period of time, a uh, promotion opportunity opened up above me and I interviewed for it and ultimately wasn't selected. And, you know, I did speak to my bosses about it and the things I could work on. And it really just um, gave me great insight into things that I could work on to make me an even better candidate. And so when the position inevitably became available again, about uh, 12 months later, I interviewed and I got it. Uh, and I had kind of addressed all the 
shortcomings or um, you know uh, flaws that they had as a candidate that didn't lead me to get the position the first time. So I think that you learn the best through the failures in life. You tend not to um, be so introspective about the successes. You just attribute them to whatever you want. You just, oh yeah, we won, great. But it's when you fail, you really kind of take a step back and look introspectively and determine, you know, what could you have done differently? Thank you so much. And here we have, what was one of the biggest challenges of your career and how did you manage it? And this one's for Steve. Okay, in biggest challenges of my career was certainly in May of 2013. Um, CTA, we had begun the red line reconstruction project, which was going to comprehensively re break down and rebuild the entire red line from 95th Street all the way down to Cermak Chinatown um, stop. And new leadership was kind of running uh, bus operations, transit operations. So after I had come into a management in the summer of 2012, about seven months prior, and I was uh, asked if I would, be, you know, would like to consider the position of an acting general manager at the Kedzie Bus Garage, which was going to be you know, part of providing shuttles for the Red Line project. So I, I knew I wasn't ready, I knew I wasn't prepared, but I said yes anyway. Um, somebody says, you know, just say yes and learn the job you know, on the way down, right? So while you're free falling. So I did, I kind of jumped in and uh, it was a challenge. I had a management team at Kedzie with managers who had more, probably more time in management than I had with the company at the time. But I didn't look at us as adversaries. I looked at us as, as co-laborers and trying to get this job done. And one of the biggest challenges I had was just getting them to trust me as a new leader. And what I did is I tried to build consensus. Um, I would certainly ask the more veteran managers for feedback and input and for them to have a voice. And, and that really benefited me. Um, I really felt like the managers with a lot of time after they saw I wasn't coming in trying to tell them how to do the job they had been doing for 10 years. I was coming in to listen to them, you know, and, and somebody, you know, some advice that took, took years ago said, you know, never tear down the fence before you find out why it was put up in the first place. So I didn't try to change anything, just came in, learned from the team. And since then, you know, here I am 10 years later, you know, in management, and that paid me, you know, that paid dividends for me to just listen to people, get input, get feedback, and let the best ideas in the room win out at the end of the day. Thank you so much, Steve, for that. And we're going to our next question is, what is one quality, characteristic, or habit you think every leader should have? And this one's for Elsa. It's gonna be hard to stick to one, <laughs> but I think um, as a leader, you have to have a growing mindset. Uh, just be, uh, just because things change all the time, and so you need to better, you need to adjust to being able to move forward with the new, um, the new goal, the new mission, the new, the new initiative. I say stay curious because it's important to continue to learn and be agile uh, because it, it, you might have done things in the past, or this is how it was done before. And really to allow some of the creative juices to come out is you've got to say, and how can we do it different? Or what did we learn? Maybe that was the best way to do it in the past, but is there a way to improve it? And, and, and what can we learn from it? Um, so I, I feel kind of those adjectives are just kind of a, a growing mindset, staying curious, being agile and continuing to learn so that um, you can be an effective uh, leader. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, I don't know if uh, Leticia wants to answer this one by any chance or Peter. Sure, sure yeah. I can. Um, I think one that I think is really important and everything Elsa mentioned also check, check, check. But I think understanding um, that perspective is important. Um, there are, you know, the right answer for someone coming through my lens and looking at the situation through my lens um, may be different for somebody who's looking at it through a different lens. And that's okay. Um, there in business and in what we do in, in almost any industry, there's going to be more than one right answer. Um, and so although from where I'm looking at it and through my perspective and what I've known in my experience, I might think that I've got, you know, the golden ticket. 
someone who hasn't lived that experience or worked in that industry may be looking at it completely different. And that may be okay. And that might be what we need to bring about some good change. And change man management is hard, um, but it's good. So I think just understanding that, especially in such a diverse group, and CTA has such a diverse workforce, um, that there's going to be many different perspectives and many different possible solutions to the same problem. Um, and a combination of everybody's answer might be the best one. So I just always think that having a good perspective and being open to someone else's perspective is important. Thank you so much, Leticia. And actually, Peter, we're going to have you answer this next question. Uh, how have you been encouraged or empowered by others throughout your career? And how do you try to encourage and empower others? Sure. Um... So uh, I've been very fortunate um, ever since I started as a, a law clerk uh, while I was in law school. Um, older attorneys always helped me out, looked out for me, um, let me sit in on all kinds of projects, let me help out any way I can. I think the, uh, the best way of learning is by simply doing. And so I'm just appreciative of all the attorneys that over the years that were just sort of as mentors to me and, and allowed me kind of contribute. And um, now I do the same thing. I mean, it's kind of funny. I just turned 40 uh, uh, last week. And it's funny to me to think I'm like the older attorney now helping people out. We have a really wonderful intern program for uh, uh, second year law students. And so I really uh, try to encourage and empower uh, those law students uh, by giving them different assignments. You know, I'm not going to throw you into the deep end right away, but, you know, maybe have you work on a part of an assignment or, you know, call the deserve first and then kind of the next time you do it. Um, and I think that uh, by working with people and, and being there to provide guidance, that's the best way to, to uh, encourage people. Thank you, Peter. And happy birthday. Happy belated. <laughs> and then we're going to go our last question what are you doing to ensure you continue your gr to grow in your career and how do you support others growth and this one is for steve and elsa elsa yeah i, I can go um i was just saying i really like to build on my team's strengths um and really ha have them um grow in what they are, are um, strong in and what they're doing, um, but then also exposing them to various perspectives. So sometimes that may be uh, going to a meeting or going to a field site that doesn't necessarily seem directly related, but it, 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 it uh, makes sense in the, bigger, in the bigger picture. I also like to challenge uh, my staff and be able to do, um, you know, do a little more than that. So when I know their strengths, it helps me better understand what things they will be challenged in and what things they enjoy and how they can flourish. So it's it's really providing a perspective and coming from a pedagogy of, of uh, the value of what that person can contribute and how you can challenge that and grow it. And so, you know, that that that's a duration of time that it takes to to do that but i think it's uh definitely worth the investment because then the person feels like they're really using their best abilities to move forward the work that they have at hand and then also to be part of um the bigger impact that cta the cta has uh within the company and within the the city and the suburbs uh, all right <clears throat> um some of the things that i do to continue continue my career growth, you know, as a leader and how I support others is I need to read a lot. I read a lot of um, information on leadership, uh, try to stay up to date on current trends, um, new workforce, what's important to them, uh, what's not important. Um, somebody mentioned earlier about maybe how we've always done it isn't the best way to keep doing it. So I'm ne I've never been afraid to kill a sacred cow, you know, and get rid of it, try something new, something different, something progressive. Um, Stephen Covey in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, you know, he talked about always keeping your, your saw blade sharp. Um, without a you know, sharp blade, you're not going to cut down any trees. So it's important for leaders to stay sharp and stay up to date on trends and just continue to grow as a leader. Once you get a title, it doesn't mean you stop learning. You just keep growing. 
Uh, one of my former pastors always used to say, say anything that's alive will continue to change. Um, how I support others. Um, first, uh, I have a, a great boss who's also Latino, um, Jairo Naranjo. Um, I've worked with him, known him for over 15 years. Our career paths have kind of come up uh, together. So we've always been, you know, had a great working relationship. And he allows um, people under him in leadership to develop and grow and work on succession planning. I encourage people, you know, under me, under my jurisdiction to continue to read, listen to TED Talks, listen to podcasts, um, do what you can to continue to keep your mind sharp. Um, just I, I challenge them, you know, to, to be in there learning, reading, growing, always looking for that next leader as well. Um, we're going to 100% of everybody on this panel and at the CTA, 100% of us are going to leave at some point. Some voluntarily, some not voluntarily, some through death, some through retirement, various ways, but 100% of us are going to leave. And the question is, how are we going to leave the CTA? Are we going to leave it in a better place than we found it? Are we going to leave it with leaders ready to step up and take the reins because they've been poured into? Or are we going to take all of our knowledge and, and just kind of you know, take it with us and never pass it on? I don't want to do that. I've never tried to be that kind of a leader. Um, anyone willing to listen, they know. They can call me and, and I'll show them everything I know. And um, yeah, I try to encourage them to just keep growing and keep learning. Never, never stop being a student. Oh, I think we're now with tech always evolving. Everything is evolving. So we got to And uh, yeah, that is all the questions. It's such an inspiration to hear from everyone. It kind of feels like I, I want to motivate myself now and want to be on everyone's level. <laughs> Thank you so much to our panel. And we're going to turn it over. And also we're going to answer all the questions after this presentation. So keep have keep having those questions rolling in in our Q&A. And we're gonna turn it over to, to Susanna, who's gonna present more about how to join the CTA and uh, all yours. <laughs> all right, thank you, Chris. Hola, buenas tardes. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Susana Orozco. I'm a talent acquisition specialist here at CTA. Like I mentioned earlier, I've been with the authority now uh, going a little over four or five years. Um, so it has been an honor to be uh, a representation of the CTA and contrib contribute towards the mission of uh, the authority. So I've had the opportunity uh, to work with a lot of great individuals um, here at CTA, including a lot of panelists that are here today. Um, today, I'm going to briefly um, speak about our recruitment process and also give you a quick overview of the CTA. Um, so at CTA, there is a lot of collaboration. I know a lot of people mentioned that today. So there's a lot of collaboration amongst various departments, um, including uh, vehicle maintenance, operations, um, and infrastructure. Um, so behind the scenes, we also have departments um, such as performance management, the planning department, which is ELSA's team, and the control center working together um, to make sure CTA is operational. Here at CTA, we have close to 10,000 employees. Um, the vast majority of our workforce is union, uh, such as bus operator and mechanic. Uh, we also have non-union positions, um, such as attorney, auditor, and project manager. Our employees are housed all over the city at our various locations, um, including our headquarters office, which is located on Lake and Jefferson. All right, so our workforce represents uh, the diverse people and neighborhoods of Chicago. So CTA is led by the first African-American president, President Dorval Carter. At CTA, we value diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're currently working on extending our rail services on the red line to stretch our transit services further south. So stand by. All right, so here at CTA, all employees are required to be COVID-19 vaccinated in accordance with CDC guidelines. So you must provide proof of vaccination before starting employment and must be fully vaccinated at least 14 days prior to your new employee orientation date. So at CTA, we wanna make sure all of our employees and everyone who's at our various work locations are safe. 
All right, so now let's talk about the different um, careers we have here at CTA. So at CTA, we have six lines of business. So we have operations, uh, which includes our, our bus operators and our operations managers. We also have vehicle maintenance, uh, which includes uh, our mechanics and our maintenance managers. We also have the infrastructure department, which includes our project managers, our facility managers, and also our engineers. Within the law department, uh, we hire four levels of attorneys. So we hire associate uh, attorneys, senior attorneys, chief attorneys, and also managing attorneys. Within technology, uh, some of the positions that we have in this department include senior data engineers and project specialists. Uh, within the administration department, uh, we have recruiters like myself, we have analysts and specialists, just to name a few. Um, so all employment opportunities are posted on our career website. Uh, so that's transitchicago.com forward slash careers. Um, so new positions are added uh, to our career website every Friday, and they're up for a minimum duration of two weeks. Um, here you can find salary information and also um, it'll let you know when a position is going to close or a job posting is going to expire. Um, if you're interested in an opportunity within CTA, it's crucial that you apply before the deadline. Uh, keep in mind, you cannot be considered for an opportunity uh, within CTA if you do not submit an application. Okay, um, so if you can go back, Chris, to the other uh, slide. Um, so there are four easy steps um, you have to complete uh, to successfully apply for an opportunity at CTA. So number one, um, you have to visit our career website. Once again, it's transitchicago.com forward slash careers. Uh, number two, you must fill out and complete a profile. Uh, number three, you must submit an online application. And then lastly, uh, the most important step, uh, you must upload an updated resume reflecting your most recent and or relevant experience. Um, remember to safeguard your login credentials as this information will be needed um, to log into your candidate profile and also check the status of your application or if you have more than one, your applications. Uh, so please um, do not create duplicate accounts as this will cause many delays with your employment application. All right, so due to the current COVID pandemic and social distancing guidelines, um, we're facilitating all of our interviews um, via the application Zoom. Um, so interviews are with an HR representative like myself, as well as a department manager. Um, interviews uh, typically uh, last anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. Um, during the interview, we focus on your work history, your education and skills, and also your previous experience. Uh, it's important to, uh, when you are uh, doing an interview with CTA, that you test your equipment um, before you start your interview. I would say, you know, at least five to 10 minutes early, um, just to make sure that everything is running smoothly. All right, so at CTA, um, both of our full-time and our part-time employees are eligible for medical benefits. Um, all CTA employees receive uh, free transit on CTA buses and trains and also um, PACE. Uh, we have a retirement options and a pension plan like Steve Wentz has mentioned earlier today. Uh, we offer paid training uh, from day one, um, and then we have ongoing professional development and um, career advancement opportunities. Um, so yes, if you're looking for an opportunity uh, within CTA, um, you know, keep in mind, this is not just a job, this is a career. And then we also provide uh, reasonable accommodations. All right, so if you're ready to apply, um, all you have to do is grab your phone, uh, take a picture of the, um, of the um, scan, the image that we have here, and then it'll take you to our application page, and then you have to start the application process. Um, so if you require assistance um, during the application process, um, you could reach out to us at CTA careers at transitchicago.com and a representative from the HR department will uh, assist you with um, your questions. All right, so don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn um, to learn more about upcoming opportunities and also learn about our company culture.
All right, thank you everyone. And I am going to turn it over to um, Chris. Right. Thank you so much, Susana, for that great presentation. And now we're, the time has come for our Q&A. So if you haven't, you can always submit your uh, question into the Q&A box below. And we have a few questions already rolling in. One is from Kevin. Uh, beyond employees, <coughs> how does CTA engage with the communities it serves when it comes to serving the Latino Hispanic community? I can. Um answer this from the recruitment perspective, uh, Chris, because we're always looking to cast as wide a net in our recruitment as possible. We want to make sure that our job postings and job opportunities reach every community in Chicago so that we can represent the city of Chicago in our workforce. And so Latino specific, <clears throat> we work with uh, partners like um, the Instituto del Progreso Latino, um, with ACE, which is um, the Hispanic Alliance for Career Enhancement, and HLPA, which is Hispanic Latino Professionals Association, to make sure that when we have job postings and job opportunities, that we are reaching out to them and they're casting that out to the Latino and Hispanic communities so that they know what's available with CTA and they can put their applications in. And, and again, we can have as diverse pool of applicants as we can. And so from the recruitment end, um, that's how we're making sure that the community is hearing about us so that we can have them join us. Thank you, Leticia. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, <clears throat> here we have a question. I don't know if it's a question. Uh, I realize CTA has a DEI initiative, um, but I am thinking beyond that. <laughs> um, I think that's a follow up. Kevin's question was okay. about how we connect with the community. So okay. yes, aside from our DEI initiative on the recruitment, and that's how we connect with the Hispanic community. Um, and then I'll answer the next one as well. Yeah. Um, yes, actually, employer resource groups are, are an initiative that we're looking into more. We want to be able to create space for our employees to be able to meet and join um, and have community with, with uh, different communities within the organization. We currently have a veteran resource group, um, which is really successful, and we get really amazing feedback from the participants in the veteran community at CTA, which is very strong. And so we want to replicate that. Um, and have other, other opportunities for uh, resource groups um, to represent the many different groups that CTA has. So um, that is the project that we are looking into now. We know that there's definitely a need and a want for it. So stay tuned if you are a CTA employee to hear more about those opportunities as they come about. Wonderful. Um, and I'll also take the next question. Yeah. Um, how soon does it take you to move into the next process? So as Susanna said, um, the application process begins with that online application. And our jobs are posted every Friday on our website and we invite anybody who is interested in feels that they have the minimum qualifications for those jobs to submit their application and express their interest in the job. Um, <clears throat> how long it takes is gonna depend on the position that the person is applying to. Um, and we wanna make sure that when people apply, they understand that um, we are CTA. So there's some positions where we may get 500, 600, 1,000 applications. And in those cases, it may take a little bit longer to hear back from us than from a position where we may not get that many applicants. Um, and there's also a lot of different processes that have to be followed. And we want to make sure that we that our process is fair to everybody. And so we review every position um, and make sure that we are following every single step. Um, so though it might seem sometimes that it takes a little bit longer, we're just ensuring that everything was done correctly. Um, the positions are usually posted for two weeks. And so we encourage everybody to check our website every Friday to make sure that they are able to catch the job that they are hoping to apply for. Um, you'll also see on our website a list of upcoming job opportunities so that you can take a glance at what might be coming um, soon. <clears throat> and then to submit that application. Um, like Susanna mentioned, there'll be a resume review. There may be testing involved. If there is testing involved, that may extend the process a little bit longer. Um, and for some jobs, we have more than one vacancy. We might have two or five or 15 or uh, 20 or 30. And that is the case with the, an organization like CTA. And so processing that many may take a while as well. So some positions may be filled in about a month. Um, some may take three to four months. And so what we say to everybody, like Susanna mentioned in her in her slide deck, check your applicant status page. If your application is still active, that means that we may still be getting to you in the long list of applicants um, that we're processing. Um, but it'll also tell you if your ap application has been closed out because perhaps you've already filled that vacancy and we're no longer looking for any more additional candidates. But if anybody has any questions, they can submit their their questions to our email. Um, that's ctacareers at transitchicago.com. 
And I'm going to put that down here to <clears throat> our chat. Great. Um, and it seems like uh, we don't have any other questions in the box. Um, but thank you to everybody who joined us and thank you to Chris, our moderator, um, <clears throat> who is one of the um, youngest tenured per, uh, professionals on the call who has been with us just a couple of months and thank you to everybody who joined us. Um, like I said, Chris is on my team and um, big uh, round of applause to them for organizing this amazing event and allowing us to hear about this great talent that we have here and hopefully um, some of the folks who have joined us to hear more about our career opportunities have felt inspired to join our community of Hispanic and Latino professionals, but also the greater CTA community. Um, I think everybody has mentioned the sense of family um, that exists here at La CTA. Um, and so if that is the type of company culture that you are looking for and career progression and advancement is something that you're also looking for, then CTA might be the place for you. So we invite you to check our website, submit that application, and hopefully we'll be, my team will be reviewing your application soon. Oh, thank you guys so Thanks, much. Everyone. Hello from 63rd and Ashland Yard. Hello, Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys.